Got a little Swedish there. there. Yeah. G'day Minecrafters and how you going? Steve-O here with another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a binary decoder and an encoder. Um, I recently started playing with these with um, making my game because I want to incorporate this 5-bit um, binary, um, uh, binary decoder um, to, uh, into my system because I'm hoping to, um, to simplify my system. Um, and you believe me, it is simplifying um, because my system is a little bit too um, space intensive as far as memory goes. Um, this is my current memory system and um, I'm trying to simplify it. So I'm, I'm working with binary at the moment and uh, we'll see how we go. So anyway, this is um, a simplified version of that. This here is my binary encoder right here. This side is the encoder. Now I've got these here, which might seem redundant, but I'll explain that in a moment. And this is my binary decoder. So like if we imagine um, these would represent the numbers 1 through 8, and these would also represent 1 through 8, except the other way around, so 1 and 8 there. So um, now one thing to take into account is that 1 is on by default on when everything else is off. So this lever here is um, of no consequence to the system, especially since there's no torches on it. But uh, let me explain the encoding process first. I'll leave an annotation so you can skip to the decoding or back and forth. And okay, so the encoding process is basically um, a basic binary system where you have um, a binary binary counting all the way through. So like uh, zero 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 is one. Then one zero one zero is one no sorry two three is zero one zero and so f one and so forth. Now when I say one and zero, what I mean is when the torch is on, it's a one, or if there's a torch there, it'd be a one when it's on, and if there's no torch, it'd be a zero when that's on. So w this torch is printing out a one. Now I've got an inversion here only so you can see the output, which will be here um, a lot easier. So this like I, um, so the output from here. I don't necessarily need these here, but it's just so you can see. So when you rebuild this or build this yourself, you don't need these torches here. You can just run it, connect it through here, and so on and so forth because it's going to go out through here. Now, obviously, you would have something in between here. So like, um, whatever function your binary is going to perform in the middle here, and then um, then this is your output here. So let's uh let's go. Go on, let's choose a number. So let's say uh, this will be a 7, which will be uh, 110, one, or it would be the other end, it be 011. One, one. And, um, and here's our output, which is 011, one, one, which is a 7. And that's 8 there. So let's do another number. Let's choose 8. And there's 8 over there, which is 111. One, one. And as you can see, 111. One, one. That's the reason I have these torches here. It's inverted so that you didn't get confused by this part um, because it would be an inversion of what's over there. And yeah, that's, so that's the basis of it. So let me show you now how to make it. Um, actually, And so I'll show you step by step how you can make your own. Um, I might make it 2-bit or whatever, but yeah, let's, let's okay. show you how so to make first it. First I want to show you how to make the, um, the binary encoder. And um, so I've made a little block out here so I can start building off of it. Um, first thing we want to do is, is notice that we have eight numbers for a, um, a three-digit binary um, number, b binary um, th whatever. Three, eight possible um, combinations from from it. So we're making our encoder. What we need is our different levers. So let's put two, three. Let me, do, you know, I'll make a two by two. It'll be easier for encoding and decoding process. We can add more digits if we need to. Um, but notice that it doubles every time. That's one thing you need to notice. Um, now this layer under here, I'll explain in a minute as well. But you'll see how important important it is um, when I'm done. So let's put some levers on here. So this is going to be. We'll count up from one, which is here, two, three, and four. So we're doing a four. 
Oh, I'm doing a four input. Okay, so four numbers, so it should be a two digit binary output. So our binary output will be out here. Let's do our two rows um, here. So if we've only got four numbers, it's two two binary num two binary um, inputs. So first, let's uh, put our row. So this will be where our, our um, torches will be on to be able to encode the um, the binary. So this is the basics of how it works is you have um, signal passing through when it's on or um, when the torch is off in this case um, and that's how you encode your numbers ah, so if I can't put it on there <laughs> fail how many times did I click you probably could hear it too um, I need that mod where you can like click from far away that'd be so handy all right so the first row has all zeros. That's something you need to notice. Um, and that's also why I've got the other line. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Cool, there's no issue there. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Alright, so now there's a reason I have this line here, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I've also got it over here. But I'll, ex I'll explain that as we go. Um, so zeros all down there. So we don't even need redstone on there, but... Yeah, because you know what? Yeah, it's not bother. It's not going to do anything. Two, three, four, five. It's only there just so you get an idea to visualize. Like, we don't even need that row there. But I wanted it for the lever um, and for that other thing there. And just so that you would understand it in due time. So there's a one here. And the next digit will be a that. And, um, hang on. Yes, right. Sorry, I was thinking I was doing a three thing and I was like, where's my other rows? <laughs> okay, anyway, so that's um, our th four possible outputs. And there, that's it. So let's put a um, two things on the end. And now we've got our binary encoder. Actually, we need to invert it again, just so we can um, understand exactly what, what's coming out and, and not just um, what we see. That's why I haven't uh, done twice over there as well. So let's uh, put another one here. So our current output is zero, 0, which is 1. This is also why we've got this here. This bottom line here um, allows us to have what I would call a command line, which um, because uh, the, the the values that you would store these in will probably, probably be RS NOR latches, um, especially if it's a, um, in, as in my case, where I'm making... Um, a text input system, um, each value needs to be stored in RS null latch arrays or a series of RS null latches. So a command line will disable access to a set of um, RS null latches um, and so on and so forth. So what we have here that's uh, at zero or a one, a zero in binary sense and a one in, um, in numerical. So that's our two, which comes out as. Zero one, which is exactly what we've got here. So one zero, one zero. That's why I inverted it again. Um, next three, which is um, zero one, because we count that way, not the other way. It can we can count either way, but it's the way they normally do it. And then one one for four. So it's very similar to what we've got over here, but it's just simplified. Um, you just add another row if you need to, or as many rows as you need, really. Um, my five by, um, sorry, my five bit system that uses um, five inputs. That's my uh, decoder, though. So this is this is the encoder. Now let's connect this to a decoder. And once again, I'll have an annotation to skip back and forth on how to make these and so forth. So it'll be nice and easy for you. Let's uh, connect these over here. Well, here. So, <laughs> clicking like a madman. You know what? Let's uh, make this smaller. Let's simplify it. Alright, so here's our binary inputs for the uh, the decoder. Let's uh, make sure the redstone 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Beautiful. Okay. So first thing we need to do is figure out that we have, as you can see here, four possible uh, options, four possible possibilities. 
So, shall I do this first and then I'll get rid of the bottom rows. So, one, two, three, and four. Okay, that's our four possible outcomes. Four. Okay, so now I'll explain how we how we do it. Now, keep in mind this is not my design, and I can't give credit to the guy I got this from because he got it from someone else, and he didn't specify <coughs> where he got it from, so just keep in mind it's not my design. Um, and yeah, so let's... First one is going to be zero zero so we put torch on the side if it's zero um and then we have a one so we'll put it on the side in a second a one and then a one one so zero is there so this is a flip of that basically so let's um i could just do it exactly the same but oh well and then what we need to do is with these ones that are inverted place a block on top of them and then a torch on the sides here. Now we're almost done. Um, we just need one a top row here on each of these. A little bit of redstone after this, and we'll be done. Done skis. So let's uh, then we put a, a torch on the ends. To show you, to show what our outputs are, also to be our outputs for. Don't actually need that. Probably just need, looks a bit neater though, let's do it. Who cares? So currently, our number, as you can see, one of them isn't lit up, um, which is our zeros, because we don't have our one actually, it's, it's one according to our uses. So it's our current number. So if we were to go back here, that this one is currently active, regardless of where the lever's on or off, because there's no torches over here. Um, now let's choose a one, oh sorry, two, and two is selected. And so on and so forth. So this is base, this is our, um, our decoder. We've got our encoder and our decoder. It's exactly the same as over here. Um, so we've got a, a three selected. And that's four. So let's let's choose four. Um, keeping in mind that if you have two levers pulled at the same time, it will mess up your count. So it's four, and it will probably just give you the maximum number if you have, um, um, if you have, for example, uh, not always depends on what's pulled. And that's our four. So there we go. Sorry, it's back to zero again. <laughs> And uh, so that's basically how it works. That's the um, the encoder and decoder. So I'm hoping to use this in my system. Um, stay tuned for um, for this and for more from me. Um, I'm Stevo, and um, I will catch you later. <laughs> All right, catch you later. Got a little Swedish there. there. Yeah.